Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. I'm just going to move this one over here so that I can park it up out of the way where it's supposed to go, which is right over there. Right, that's all I want to do with that one. Uh, we've got prices starting to just now come up with the wool, which is excellent. We may be able to sell before the end of the day, I'm not quite sure. Eggs are two and a half thousand at the moment, which is pretty good. I mean, we've got a lot of eggs, but we're not going to sell them yet. We'll wait until the price has gone down and then come back up again. Um, and that will give us plenty of eggs to sell then. We've got one full pallet there. We've got a, far, uh, a part pallet. Uh, then over here, we've got 4,600 on that one. That's the 4,200 for that one up there. Uh... Yeah, so I got 4,000, yeah, 4,600 on that one there. That one's 1,300. That one's 1,100, and then that one's 1,500 up there. So the, the big boxes down here haven't got very much in yet. we just got to keep waiting for them and hoping that they will eventually fill up. I mean, we've got all the chickens in here. We've got 400 chickens in here, so we're not going to need to worry about them. And the chickens we've got, the brown ones. Oh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter with this. It doesn't matter because um, we're not using seasons. Um, so the egg yield is the same regardless of the breed. There's only a seasons thing where they change the egg yield. Um, okay, so the jobs that we want to get going today are this one. I want you to keep going. And then this one over here, we will be doing some work with, but we're not going to do that one yet. We're going to go over here, we're going to go to decoration, and we're going to build that fence that I wanted to build all up alongside those trees. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to take the short wooden fence, and this one is going to go from that bridge. We're going to bring that one all the way down here to the edge of where the field is going to be. It's, I'm going to bring it over to here. I'm going to bring it over a little bit further than the very edge of the field. It's going to go over this far. And we're going to have it facing in that way because then I can stack one on top of the other without too much trouble. So all i got to do is make sure that I've got it lined up along the edge of... I can lower it down, but that's as high as I can take it right there. And so I'm going to put that one into there like that is the very first one. And then what I'm going to do is I want to try and put these. Can't be placed here. This is the problem, is that I'd like to overlap them ever so slightly, but it's, it's not going to allow me to overlap very easily. I'm going to end up having to put the posts side by side. I mean, that'll be all right. We can do that. We can put them right on the side, because I can't put them so that they merge one into the other. So I'll just have to do it so that these posts are next to each other like that. There. Which is actually okay. That, that's actually okay. We, I've, I've, I've made fences like that before. Um, it's, it's not ideal. Ideally, we'd like to put one on top of the other. but uh, so, so they cover each other up and it makes it look like we've actually got the fences in the right place. Um, like it's just one post on each one, but we can use two. I have done that when you, I've got shorter bits of wood. Basically, you have one that goes right down in the ground and then the one that goes beside it. So that one will go there like that. The one that goes beside it, that's the one that you end up using. Um, you, you, you put like a couple of bolts or a couple of large nails in and you join them together. So that you got one deep down into the ground, holding into the ground, and then the next one is up a little bit higher, and it's not, um, it's, it's in the ground a little bit, but only like a tiny, tiny fraction. It's, it's not really going to, um, it, it's certainly not going to be in the ground enough to be able to hold the fence up on its own, which is why you use two of them. I've only ever done that once. And that was because we had a shortage of suitable fencing materials. Ideally, you wouldn't want to do something like that. But um, sometimes you have to make do with what you got. So making do, that's what we're doing at the moment. We're going to do that all the way up through here. 
We're going to make do with our fence right the way up along here. And that next one there, I'm going to swing you in a little bit. You're going more under the trees here. A little bit more under the trees. Still looking all right, though. Now, that one's going to be a little bit more difficult to see what I'm doing. It's getting close enough as well. Trying to get close enough to see where we're lining each one up. I'm all right there. Uh... That kind of looks about right there. And right, if that keeps going in a straight, yeah, I need to curve it round a little bit more again. Because otherwise it's going to be stuck right out. That one, I could, um, it, I'm almost to the point where I can bring them out a little bit. Uh, I can't raise it up any higher, remember. This is the, the maximum height that I can bring it up. But if you have a look there now... That one is sticking up out of the ground. Although I still need to bring this one back over here. I'll bring that over there like that. We kind of have them overlapping a bit. And uh, now I want to... Oops. I want to do that. Now I want to lower that one down so that the fence post is on top of it like that. And then I'll bring it back up again. And this time, uh, no, I want the height on it. I'd rather have the height on it, so I w I won't overlap. I, I I won't like make the fence the the same height. I'll, I'll bring it up ever so slightly, and then I can bring it up to here. And I can't even overlap this end one, which is a little bit weird, because we did we did that before. I was able to overlap them a bit. So I'm not quite sure why it's not letting me overlap them now. Still, never mind. We're a we are now able to get them into the ground. That's that's the important thing. So long as I can keep putting them into the ground, roughly, we'll be able to keep going with it. It's just bringing you back ever so slightly. There we go. A little bit further, and and I want to go up that way. Uh, that one can go in a straight line along there, like that. And then over here, we will bring it back that way a bit more. Like that. And... Right, now, I will swivel it round. I think that the reason I was able to get it overlapped last time was because I did it like that. I overlapped the back end of it like that. And that's where it properly overlapped. But that one's going to go there. Right. Job done. I've now got a fence that runs along the edge of there, and that should stop any of our vehicles driving down over the edge of the bank. We have a great demand at the universal selling point. That's all done there. Um, what is the great demand for? I've not actually... Oh, it's for wheat this time, but it's quite low anyway, so it's not going to make any difference to us. Uh, we're up to 708 there. That one's dropping down. All right, just having a quick drink. And now we will start up the... Not the AI vehicle extension, the GPS. And I will go Alt-E twice like that so that we can still... Oh, I'm going to need to allow create fields as well. Start that one moving along like that. And then stop right there, and then Alt-E, and then Control-S. I'll auto-width it, and then what I do is I lower it down a little bit there. A couple of notches, just so that we've got, like, enough overlap down the bottom on there. And that's all I need to do. And we're away. Right. So we've got the plough is still ploughing our field over there. We're working away on this bit. And hopefully we will be able to finish the field. Although I'm, I'm genuinely not sure at the moment if we're actually going to be able to finish the field today or not. Um, I'm genuinely unsure if that's going to be a thing. We might if we can. Excellent. That would be absolutely fantastic if we can finish the field today. Uh, if not, then there'll be a little tiny bit left to do at the beginning of next week, which is, you know, th th that's fine. We, we can cope with that. We'll also be getting into our next harvest next week. We've got a bit of grass down the end over there that we're going to want to 
Um, uh, Mo and Bale, and we will wrap that. We'll do that as silage. It's only, you know, it doesn't take very long to do that, and that sort of happens while we're doing the combining down here. We've now got our slightly bigger combine anyway. If we're moving up into this, if we end up turning this field into an arable field, right, it's quite a big field. That combine is going to take a considerable amount of time to actually do all of that work, isn't it? it? It is going to take quite a while. And I did forget all about the tree stump that is left over here. So I'm going to go and do that now so that I don't forget it. Otherwise, I am just going to completely forget it. So I'm going to lower that one down there and I'm going to leave it there for a minute. And I'm going to drive straight up over here and get the stump grinder because that right there is the tree stump that we want to take out. So I will come up across here. Now, we're removing the, like, the, the plowing. It, it's got needs plowing underneath um, where we've done the stuff with the cultivator. But we're, we're removing all of that with the plow that is working up and down the field. So, so long as that can stay there, that would be absolutely brilliant. Um, we it'll then improve. Well, it, it as long as it can stay there. Of course, it, it's it's going to stay there now, and that will improve the yield of the field until we plant something like corn in here. So we're not going to need to worry about it after this. But I would like to definitely get all plowing requirements out of the way um, before we finish doing this, because as this is hardcore, and we're sort of trying to do this as realistically as possible. Um. We're going over the field first with a disc cultivator to break up anything that is on the surface. So you remember this was all forest, right? So there's going to be a lot of surface roots and um, scrub and bushes and stuff like that. The, those are the sorts of things that will get wrapped around the plough and choke it up, cause problems. So we don't want those sorts of problems. So we're going over it first with the discs and we're just breaking up some of the, we're chopping up some of the vegetation on the surface to make life a little bit easier. Then we're going through with the plow and it's not a mold board plow, we're not turning the soil over. We've got a ripper right there that is just ripper tines going deep into the ground and ripping through the rest of it. So that again is a suitable type of machine for the job that we've got in hand. Once we've done that, we're then will want to cultivate everything afterwards to make a suitable um, tilth for planting any um, plants in here. So we'll ne everything that's been ploughed, we'll need to go over it again with the cultivator. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so that will be our next job once the ploughing is finished. Oops, because I um, went off, it's turned off the allow create fields bit. Once the ploughing is finished, um, we will then need to go back over this field again with the cultivator to prepare it ready for the seed drill. And yes, in real life, that is something that you would do again because you wouldn't have a direct drill going in straight on top of the plow. Um, you direct drill direct into the ground, although going into grass would be a little bit unusual. Um, it's, uh, it still happens, it's just less, less frequent than going into the stubble of any of the other crops. Um, so, yeah, it's unusual that you would go into um, grass, but it does happen. But you wouldn't go putting a direct drill, unless it's got a power harrow or something like that built into it, you wouldn't go with a direct drill into ploughed land. You would cultivate it first, because otherwise you get left with... Oops, I definitely didn't want to do that. Uh, otherwise you get left with a load of lumps of soil everywhere um, that don't end up supporting any plants. And you really, really don't want that. So, we are going to go back over and we're going to cultivate it again. Hardcore series, we're supposed to be doing things reasonably realistic. And no doubt, no doubt, there will be cries of, but you use autoloaders. Yes, I know. That is a, that is what I'm calling an allowed and forgiven um, shortcut. I will shamelessly use autoloaders. Absolutely. 100% gladly and shamelessly use autoloaders in order to speed things up and because I don't want to be messing around doing manual loading on everything. I've spent enough hours in real life using a loader. I don't need to come in and do it in the game as well. I really, really don't. 
Um, I've handled enough bales to last me an entire lifetime. So I don't need to go and do it again. And quite frankly, like the, the hardcore, we've already got enough hardcore going on with um, cutting down, like cutting all of the trees and everything. That's, that's pretty hardcore sort of stuff, right? I'm not using any other shortcuts other than an auto loader. I haven't gone in and got the front mounted um, grinder, chopper, machiney thingamajig. Um, that you just take up to a tree and it instantly turns the whole thing into wood chips. Right, I haven't done that. That would be too much of a shortcut, too much of a, a cheat, I feel. And so I've decided not to use that one at all in this series. And I know that many of you are grateful for that. I know that some of you um, feel felt that, you know, early on that perhaps I was doing a little bit too much with the trees and everything, but, you know, we, we, we kind of needed to. We, we didn't have a lot of choice on that matter. Um, but now it's done. It's, it's all finished. The, the trees are now done. Well, they're not all finished. Okay, that missed a little bit there. So let's reverse up there and try that again, shall we? There we go. Right. It's this steeper bit here. Right, the steep hill on the side, that's always where you're going to end up missing a little strip. And sometimes when you're using just standard hired help, it doesn't overlap enough. And standard hired help will end up actually missing strips on really steep ground if you're working across the side of it. This field here, we will be working across the side of it. We're not going to be working up and down on this field. It's... You know, it's bad enough working up and down just on that bit with the time that it slows down. But all the way across, no, we will be going sideways on this field. And, you know, it is it is quite steep, but I don't think it's steep enough that you would need to be overly concerned about the tractor going along the side of this hill. I have worked steeper ground than this side to side. Um, I, You know, ideally, you would want to work up and down a hill. Um, or I've always ideally found working up and down a hill, although these days, with tractors the way they are, very often you'll find people putting double tires onto, uh, double wheels onto a tractor, and then working across the side of the hill rather than up and down. Because if you're going across the side of the hill, the only concern is tipping sideways. And if you've got big wide wheels on, that's negating the, the main problem that you would have. Moving up and down the hill, you've got very much always the risk of running away down the hill. That is a big concern. It's always like the, the biggest problem that you will have working a steep hill is running away down the hill. And you don't want to do that. Um, it's, it's kind of detrimental to your health and the continued survival of the tractor and your employment as well. Uh, all, all of these factors come into it, and you, you, you just don't want to do it. You, you don't want to end up um, sliding off down the hill. And right there, you can see what I mean with a strip being left behind. So I'm going to go back now and get that strip. All right, it's just out enough up there on that steep little bit of hill that it's it, it it's just left a tiny strip and the hired help will end up doing the same we know that but that's fine it's only going to be one or two little strips here in places that it will do and then we get onto slightly more level ground and it goes okay again the, the, the way to combat that is to give it a slightly bigger overlap that's all we need to do I'm not going to worry about it I can tidy up there's only a few little bits over there which I can tidy up. Um, so yeah, your concern of the tractor rolling down the hill, like going across sideways here, it's a bit, you know, it's, it is on the side of the hill, but it's, it's nowhere near steep enough to actually worry about. Perhaps down the other end, there are a few spots down there where it's steeper and you might start to be a little bit concerned, but for the most part, no, I don't think that you'd need to worry about that either. Um, this field here is is pretty good um moving up and down the field right is always much much safer if you've got a runoff at the bottom when you're having to move go down the field and then turn on the steep part that's where the danger happens that's that's the dangerous bit is turning on a hill 
going straight across or going straight down is less of a problem than it would be going part way down the hill and then turning. Your tractor becomes most m the most unstable when you're actually making a turn. That's when it's most likely to roll and, to, um, and, and flip over onto its side. So um, if you were working this field and you were having to come down the hill, I mean, like I said, this one's not steep enough. Maybe this bit here, like that is actually getting a little bit more steep there, but still it's not steep enough that it would cause any problems. Um, but if it was steeper than that, you wouldn't want to be turning on the sort of halfway down the hill. That, that's where it becomes dangerous, is, is turning partway down the hill. So if you can avoid turning partway down the hill, yeah, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'm going to end up leaving a strip here in a minute, aren't I? Uh, no, he's not. He's actually not going to leave a strip. Ideal, look at that. Right, and now he's moving back up into familiar territory. Um, yeah, th so because you can't turn on this field, what you would do is you would work your turns so that you come down the shallowest part of the hill and you go up the steeper part because of the turns at the bottom. You would make sure that you were, go you were working up on the steep parts rather than coming down on the steep parts because you're being forced to turn at the bottom. Now, if you didn't have anything like that at the bottom, if you didn't have a fence there and you actually just went straight and it, it went down a steep hill and it ran out onto the more level ground, then you wouldn't worry about that. You would do completely the opposite. You would go up the shallow parts and you would um, work down the steeper parts. And the reason that you would work down the steeper parts is because it would make less of a mess in the field. If you're, if you're driving down over, your, your wheels aren't digging in and trying to get purchase in order to pull you up the field. So you're not going to be having any kind of wheel spin or any issues like that. You're not going to end up um, damaging the surface of the field. Because that would that's kind of the biggest issue, is damaging the actual field. And if you've got too steep a ground, if, if the ground is too steep, um, you will be digging in, but you've also got to take into account where the fence lines are. And I know a lot of um, places with steep ground where they, and if they've got like a fence along the bottom, I've, I've actually seen people changing fences around. Um, they didn't used to be quite so much of a problem, but with bigger machines, it becomes more of an issue. Um, and I've seen people removing fences halfway down a hill so that a tractor can work its way all the way down the hill and then drive up and and it would make it a little bit better why is helper g oh helper g has completed its task because it's gone over here and decided that that was quite far enough unfortunately helper g has just been fired that was gary um and has now been replaced because yeah uh, don't telephone me and tell me that uh, you've finished your work when you quite clearly haven't, as that's unacceptable. So, Gary has been fired. It's been sent back to the city in disgrace. And we've now got um, Bertie up here. That's, that's Bertie right there. He's, he's busy working hard. He's going to do the ploughing. He's going to keep his job. He's going to stay employed. Don't be like Gary. Be like Bertie. That's the lesson for the day. Right. Back down here to you. So I've got a little bit more that I want to do down on this pointy bit. There's only a little tiny bit to do down here. And then that bit is finished. Then I can go up to the top, uh, or not to the top, and go back over to the other end. And I've got one more little bit that I want to do over there. And I could actually start working my way around the edge of the field to start the cultivating. Because we've got to cultivate this field. Although I'm not going to work right around the entire edge of the field because the plough is busy doing some work at the moment and I don't want to get in the way of the plough. So I will stick with this down here. Um, and instead, what I think I will do is I will cultivate around a little bit. I'll cultivate around like part of the land work up there, up to where the plough has reached. And then I will um, start the hired help working on some of that up there. 
Right, you will go into there like that, and done. There. That one is finished on there. Then I need to go over here, and I've got one more little bit that I want to do across this way. I will put myself into the GPS bit on there. So we've got like a little bit of a indentation into the field right there. But I think overall, that's not, like, that's not, it, it may end up being that it does cause an, an issue or two when we're doing our work in the field. But I don't think it's going to be, it's definitely not going to be anything major. It's not going to be like any kind of serious problem or anything like that with it. It's not going to hold us up any great deal. Um, it's just going to be kind of another little feature of the field that we will end up figuring out how to work around. The, the biggest uh, thing that is going to cause us problems in this field is... Right, I'm going to turn off the GPS now. The biggest thing that's going to cause us problems in this field is going to be working around that big stone up there in the middle. Right, if we could remove the stone from the middle of the field, that would be absolutely fantastic. That would definitely be the best thing that we could do, is get rid of that one. However, that's not going to happen. We're not going to be able to get rid of that stone, so we're just going to have to live with it. What I'm going to do here... I'm going to start cultivating right there. And we've got to remember that whatever I cultivate, the grass to our side is also susceptible to being cultivated. So I'm going to bring you up to there like that. And I am going to cultivate round here. I am going to cultivate this bit. I know it's going to cost us some of our grass for this next harvest. But, quite frankly, I don't think that matters too much. Right? It's only going to be a small quantity of the grass. It's not going to make a huge difference to the overall yield. And that's only, like, a, a temporary thing. Our next harvest that we're going to do is going to be the entire field. And that's going to be a lot of harvesting. That's going to be a lot of stuff that we're going to get back from this one. I've got that little patch over there, which I will go and do next as well. We'll run over that side and we'll get that bit. Right, I'm going to drop you down in like that. And I'll go up there like that. Just take all of it. I am cultivating in a little bit of extra grass there, which I shouldn't really be doing, but it'll be fine. It's just another one of those examples of, yes, we don't necessarily want to do it, but quite honestly, it's in the grand scheme of things, not going to make very much difference at all. There, there's that bit done. Now I can run over here and get this little slice over here. Uh, how are the prices doing? Come on a few hours. 728 on there. Silage is still 347. That's really high, actually, the silage. Uh, straw's not changed. Straw we should have sold when it was at 60. That was a nice price. Oats are lowering down and eggs are dropping as well. So, wool is the one that we want to keep the closest eye on. That's the one that is that we're going to be selling um, once we've finished doing everything here. Uh, uh, well, not once we finish. Once the price gets up high enough on the wool, we're going to be selling. That's, that's our very next sale that we'll be making will be the wool. As soon as it's reached a high enough price. it Well, so long as the high point goes above a thousand. We know sometimes the high point doesn't quite reach a thousand, but because I know that the high point can go a reasonable amount above a thousand, I'm definitely going to wait. Well, I say definitely. If it doesn't quite reach a thousand and then stops, what we might do is we might just sell two pallets to give ourselves a little bit of breathing room, and then we will allow the wool to keep accumulating. That might be a more sensible solution. Rather than giving a blanket definitely going to do this, that, or something else, uh, it might be an idea just kind of play that one by ear, because if it gets to 990 and then stops, I don't think it would be a very sensible idea to just say, no, we're not going to sell anything, because that means I'm going to have to run off and get another six empty pallets in order to be able to cope with the influx of extra wool. I mean, yes, that ultimately would probably be the more sensible option to go and do that um so that that's definitely something we would consider and we're going to want more pallets up here anyway if we do go through with the plan of getting a second sheep pen although the rate we're going at the moment with the money that i suspect that we're going to make off this field with a single cut of silage 
Plus, we've also got our other crops down there, down over that way. Um, we've got a lot of money due to come in very soon. We've got the crop that's in the field at the moment, which I think is wheat. Then we're going to plant oats again so that we can sell... We, we can't sell the oats we've got at the moment because we've got less than 45,000. So we want another crop of oats and then we'll be able to sell all of the oats. And then once we've done that, uh, we are... Everything that we, everything that we grow after that will be for the pigs. That's what we'll be doing. Every, everything that we grow after the next crop of oats will be for the pigs. So it'll be, we'll, with a view to keeping it to do other stuff with. Right, we want to keep the oats, uh, sell the oats, sorry, but the, the rest of it will all be kept so that we can make a load of money off of it. Now, if I run this down here, I suspect it's going to end up causing us problems. So I'm going to stop that one there like that. And then I'm going to bring it round like this, and I'm going to carry on with... I think that the plough is only going to plough the stuff that needs ploughing. But just in case it doesn't, just in case it does go right out to the edge of what's cultivated, I'm not going to go any further than this. But I, I don't think that does come into it. I think it will only do the bits that genuinely need ploughing according to the in-game engine and it won't just keep going ploughing up land just because it's got um because it's cultivated or whatever it will just say that it doesn't need ploughing and it will leave it and um, that land you would only actually need to go over and cultivate so i'm that's what i'm that's the assumption i'm making should never make assumptions never at all assume makes an ass out of you and me a very important lesson to be learned there um well, I'm going to bring that one in like that, because we got like that sort of double dip bit right there. Rather than double dipping our tractor, we'll try and straighten it all out so that what it ends up doing is a neat straight line all along here. The light is starting to fail. Dusk is going to be upon us soon. The shadows are lengthening on the ground. I don't know that we're going to have time to actually finish doing our cultivating. Certainly, I'm not going to start planting today. I'm going to wait for the planting until tomorrow, and then we can get the seed drill going. Although, actually, we'll be doing our harvest first. So, we'll get the harvest done. Then, we will get the seed drill going. And we've got uh, grass to plant all the way along this field. And then we're going to have um, the oats to plant in the field down the bottom what we'll be planting down there and then well once all that's done then we just gotta wait for time to tick by again we will go and cut down yet more trees it did do it look it didn't actually need any cultivating across that bit but the plow did go and do it he's gone and done a stripe right the way across our field it's only so even though the game itself didn't need plowing it's decided to go and plow that bit up anyway which means that we're going to have to replant that. Um, that wasn't quite part of the master plan. That definitely wasn't part of the master plan. Well, we, we, we can run a cultivator along there. And then um, we'll... Well, I'm just going to do one strip up through the middle of this. I'm not going to try and make sure that I get all of it. Because this shouldn't have happened anyway. Um, but anyway, this is all we've got time for today. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.